Muhammad the Messenger by Barbara Lippmann. Muhammad in Abdallah lit the last bit of pastry from his lips. The mixture of dates, walnuts, almonds, and honey had just the right amount of cinnamon and orange blossom flavor. The meal had been impressive. Fresh yogurt, a spicy salad made with cracked wheat grains, roast goat and lamb, eggplant dumplings, spiced chickpeas and lentils, and goat's milk. His dear wife, Khadija, had prepared a, me a meal fit for kings, and his guests seemed well satisfied. But no evening would be complete without poetry. Arabs were some of the best poets in the world. Arabs loved to write and listen to poetry. So, of course, Muhammad had hired one of the best poets here in the city of Mecca to entertain his guests. As the poet began to recite, Muhammad looked into the courtyard of his comfortable home. Fountains bubbled. Small birds bathed in the water. A breeze tickled the leaves of the dozens or so date-filled palm trees. Muhammad sighed. Inside, his home was just as beautiful. Colorful tiles brightened the walls. Brightly colored carpets and wall hangings made his home feel warm and comfortable. Candles and oil lamps cast flickering light across the rich colors and into the dark corners. Muhammad sighed again. Even with all this, he was not content. Oh, he did not long for more beautiful things, more camels, or more gold. No, he was more than fortunate to have the worldly goods he did. For a poor orphan taken in by an uncle after his parents' death, Muhammad had done very well. He was an honest, respected businessman who sold Arabian spices to the east. No, Muhammad was unhappy because he longed for the feelings he had as a poor child. When he was a child, people cared about each other more. The needs of the tribe were more important than those of the individual. Now it seemed people cared more about themselves than of their tribe, and there was too much gambling and drinking. Tomorrow I will return to my cave in the hills, thought Muhammad. For many years, Muhammad had been spending time alone in a cave on Mount Hira. There he would meditate and think about how he could make life better. The day after the dinner party, Muhammad set out for Mount Hira. The air smelled sweet with the odor of spices. The heat brought out the scent of plants where they grew on the dry hillside. Here and there, Muhammad saw goats gazing on the thinly scattered grass. When Muhammad arrived at the cave, it was dark and cool inside. He sat and thought for many hours. Then, to his surprise, he heard a voice. Muhammad, you are a messenger of God, it said. It told him he must proclaim the word of God to his people. Muhammad was uneasy. He was only 40 years old, and he thought maybe he was going crazy. He decided to go home and tell his wife Khadijah what had happened. She thought God had sent an angel, the angel Gabriel, to Muhammad to tell him he was a prophet. Khadijah believed Muhammad could be a good prophet who would help their people find a better way to live. Khadijah told some of her friends and family about what had happened to Muhammad. They wanted to talk with him and find out what the angel had said. God also began to reveal more truths to Muhammad, who called these truths revelations. Soon, more and more people were interested. Muhammad began to preach to small groups of people. Some people made fun of him, but many did not. They listened carefully and thought the revelations made sense. Later, people began to write them down. Eventually, all, these, all the revelations would be included in a book called the Quran. Some people who listened to Muhammad's preaching were angry. These, these were merchants in Mecca who made a lot of money from people coming to pray to the Kaaba. At this place, people worshipped many gods and goddesses. Muhammad, had, Muhammad said that people should worship only one god, Allah. The merchants were worried that people would stop coming to Mecca. If they did, the merchants would not be rich anymore. They threatened Muhammad sometimes and even attacked him. Muhammad and some of his followers decided they must leave Mecca. This was a sad time for Muhammad. Not only was he leaving his home, but his beloved wife Khadijah had died. 
They were fir they first went to the town of Taif, but soon the people there said that he could not stay. Muhammad had to return to Mecca. In Mecca, life became difficult. Muhammad and his followers heard a rumor that some people were planning to murder him. That night, Muhammad and a trusted friend, Abu Bakr, left the city and hid in a cave in the hills. Some people say the men who had planned to kill Muhammad rode right by the cave but didn't look inside because a spider's web covered the opening. When it was safe to come out, the prophet and his friend went to Medina, a town where many of Muhammad's followers lived. When Muhammad and Abu Bakr arrived in Medina, people were excited and happy. These Muslims were glad to see their prophet was safe. If his enemies had found Muhammad, they would surely would have killed him. This important journey was called the Hijira, and now marks the first year of the Muslim calendar. Now Muhammad had a place to live where many people believed in his revelations. Muhammad still had a dream. He wanted to send the people who worshipped many gods and goddesses away and turn the Kaaba into a place of worship for Muslims. His opportunity came in 630. By this time, Muhammad had many followers. He decided it was time to march again on Mecca and try to take over the town. Muhammad and his men were well armed and ready to fight. When they got to Mecca, they were surprised. There was no one waiting to fight. A new leader had come to power. He saw how many people were becoming Muslims. He also knew what good fighters Muhammad and his men were. He surrendered the city. Muhammad and his men entered the city peacefully. Muhammad went straight to the Kaaba. He touched the black stone at the eastern corner of the Kaaba and shouted, Allahu Akbar, which means God is great in the Arabic language. From that moment forward, the Kaaba became a Muslim shrine. Muhammad returned to Medina in triumph. Everywhere, Muslims rejoiced at Muhammad's great victory and looked, toward, looked forward to the time when they could make their own pilgrimage to Mecca. Muhammad lived only two years after he took over the Kaaba, but from the age of 40 until he died, he founded an important new religion. Today, there are more than a billion Muslims. Twenty years after Muhammad's death, his revelations were written down in the Quran. The Quran also includes the five pillars of the Muslim religion.